you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line Can hold it down. Shout out to my man Sammy, got it off the ground. And to all the listeners tuned in right now, got debates, analysis, and speculation. This is sports talk for the new generation. You know where to find us, got a reputation. Sick podcast, your number one sports destination. We're giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion. Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. Listen to the sick podcast. The eye test with Pierre McGuire and Jimmy Murphy. The Stanley Cup winning Colorado Avalanche. And after 22 years, Raymond Marsh. The 
sickest NHL podcast. It's going to be sick. And welcome to another edition of the Eye Test here on the Sick Podcast Network. I'm Jimmy Murphy. He's Pierre McGuire. And Pierre, a busy night in the NHL last night. And again, like there is every night, surprises. And one of them I want to jump right into, Pierre, that, you know, you you had mentioned, referenced, uh, that Jersey had been a thorn in the side of the Pittsburgh Penguins, but could they rally behind their captain, Sidney Crosby, who continues. I know they're not in the playoffs, but he is playing heart tro- heart trophy caliber hockey. And they do just that, Pierre. Uh, they're not out of it yet, Pierre. The Penguins are still alive. And it's Alex Nedeljkovic in goal. Mm-hmm. It's not Tristan Jarry. Yep. No, Jimmy, you're right. And, and hats off to Sidney Crosby, by the way. Uh, he deserves a huge amount of credit. He's played fantastic hockey for the Pittsburgh Penguins all season long. It's not hyperbole coming from you that it really is an MVP type season for Sidney Crosby. The problem is you got Kucherov in Tampa, you got McDavid obviously in Edmonton, and you got McKinnon in Colorado that have a whole lot to say about who's going to be the MVP. And don't forget Austin Matthews in Toronto. So you got a lot of guys, but Sid's been great. Um, that was a courageous effort by the Penguins last night. You know, another team you want to talk about courageous. How about Montreal against Florida? Oh, well, I said it, hey. I mean, these guys are playing some – they're playing playoff hockey even though they're not headed to the playoffs, Pierre, and that's why I was complimenting them last week. Just the way, you know, they just have this good culture going on, this good belief in each other. They're playing team hockey. They're doing their jobs out there. They're 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 offensive, but they're also defense. Like they're staying within the structure, but they're also creative out there too, and they're having fun. And I yeah. think right now, and I know they're not headed anywhere. I know it's it's crazy to say. Sometimes the most fun I have watching when I'm watching hockey games is watching the Montreal Canadiens appear. Well, they have a legitimate first line. Nick Suzuki, Slavkovsky, and Caulfield is a legitimate NHL first line. So when you got a legitimate NHL first line that produces at least a point and a half to two points a game, you got a chance to be in it if other guys can kick it in. New Hook's really starting to take his game to another level. Um, and so you think about where the team's going to be when they get Kirby Doc into the equation. Um, and some, you know, Joshua Roy is another one they got to think about long term. It's exciting. And you know, Jeff Gordon and Kent, we keep talking about it on the show. We were, I think, the first people to actually, you know, make sure that they were supported because they deserved it. Um, way back when we started this about six months ago, Jimmy. Yes. They've they've done a really good job. Yeah. They've done an out as a management team, they've done a fantastic job. They have. You know, Pierre, we look at the other side of the ice in that game. Now, I get it. The Florida Panthers are banged up right now. They're missing some key players. I'll see them that. However, let's let's just call a spade a spade. Over the last 10 games, they have not been playing the type of hockey they need to be playing heading into the playoffs. Or am I just reading too much into it? I think you're overreacting, um, and I don't I, mean that with any disrespect. No, no, I, just, I asked you if I would. No, 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 but I just so you know, I mean, you don't have Kachuk. That's a big part of your team. Um, you don't have Carter Verhage. That's a big part of your team. You lose Aaron Eckblad after the first period last night after he got in a tussle with Slavkowski. It shows you how strong Slavkowski is. Mm-hmm. Ekblad's a big, physical, strong person. Um, so, you know, you don't have those guys. Uh, you played the night before in Toronto where you put on a Herculean effort in the third period to get back in the game only to lose it. Um, so you're running on – you're basically running on fumes. You're playing against a Canadiens team that's all amped up. These are playoff games for Montreal. Yeah. These are their playoffs. Yep. So I would so I watched Florida play on Saturday afternoon against Detroit. And they won the game, but what they, the way they played, that tells me there's a playoff team in that in that group. Okay. They were physical, they were mean. Bennett really I, I'll tell you right now, if I'm playing Florida in the first round, I know everybody talks about Kachuk and everybody talks about mm-hmm. Sasha Barkov. The guy I'm I'm telling you right now. You said it a week ago, Pierre, when they played the Bruins, remember? Yeah, well, no, when he went after Hampus Lindholm, yeah. I'm just telling you, Jimmy, I, I wish I had a team because if I did, that guy would be on it. Yeah. But when you when you think that way and you have to drop game plans to do this, and I used to do that for a living, Jimmy, as you yeah. know. Oh, I know. That, that guy would hate my team. Yep. He would hate my team. You know yep. why? Because I respect him so much. We're going to make his life unbelievably uncomfortable. Exactly. 
And and I have I, Sam Bennett is just he's a difference maker in so many ways. I recall a certain number five on a Penguins blue line that did that uh, to the Boston Bruins uh, way back when, if you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> and yeah, you need those guys in the playoffs here. And you know, I look at Sam Bennett and I think back. You referenced that Lindholm incident there. When I was watching that, do you know what immediately went through my head? Was no. Brad Marchand using oh. was it? Daniel or Henrik, I forget. It was one of the yeah, same. But all – Back in front of the net. <laughs> it was in the game. It was in uh, Vancouver. It was either game one or two. It must have been game one maybe. Yep. Because I remember we did a sit-down interview. Uh, NBC asked me to do a sit-down interview with the two Sedins and Alex Burroughs, who was their line mate. Yeah. And I think it was Daniel. I think it was. I, I hope I got it right. And if I don't, I apologize to Daniel. Then it was Henrik. Yeah. And he looks at he looks right at me and he says, I'm the carnivore in the group. <laughs> it, was just, it was so funny. <laughs> even even Burroughs is looking at me going, that was pretty good. Yeah. It was funny. It was very funny. But I just remember, you know, the way and Martian was just starting off then. He was a young player, but he had that Bennett like aggravating sense out there and really getting under the the skin of the other team and rattling them. And that's what Bennett's doing each game. So I'm with you. They've got that going for them. All I was saying is you look back to last year at this time, right, Pierre? Yeah. They they had to play almost above yeah. playoff hockey. Yeah, they were an eight seed. They were, yeah. It wasn't like they were getting in automatically. They were an eight seed. Oh, they yeah. had to wait to the end. Yeah. So, no, you're, you're not wrong on that, Jimmy. You're not right. wrong on that. My thing is, so they, they went to the final last year. Mm -hmm. So that takes something out of you. you know, I've, I've seen I'm that, just too. Gonna go there. So it takes something out of you. The fact that Tampa was able to go to three straight final – it's amazing. That's pretty amazing, especially when you consider the COVID stuff. Yeah. I, again, that, that's a hats off to Eiserman, who was there before, um, and, and obviously the entire group that that, that he passed the team off to. Um, Julian Breezeball and his group that did fantastic work there. Johnny Cooper on the bench. But I look, I look at Florida now. I'm not that concerned as long as those guys aren't hurt bad. Okay. Well, if Ekblad's hurt bad, or if Kachuk's hurt bad. That's a problem, right? That, that that's a problem, but I, I don't think they're hurt that badly. I, think I, think it's like, I, I gotta make. I feel it's like it's maintenance. You know, it's it, they yeah, call so it that is fine. But you're you're right. You want to be playing well going into the playoffs. Um, I would be more concerned if I didn't see a lot of thump from their team, and yeah. they still have. If you didn't have Bennett doing what he's doing, yeah, yeah they I'm, still have thump. Like I'm watching their guys. Montour thumping guys around, Forslings thumping guys around, Ekblad last night trying to clear the crease. Yeah. Um, you know, with uh, Slavkovsky. So if they were playing soft, I'd say this is, you know, they're too cool for school, but they're not. They're playing pretty hard edge still. Yeah. How do, as a coach, Pierre, how do you, so we talk about you got guys banged up at this time of year. And obviously, like you just said, when you're a team that went as deep as they did last year, the wear and tear is a little worse. Yep. So when you're a coach, you know, it's a, it's, I hate the word load management. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's, I think it's so overused. You can use Guy Boucher's line, which was really good. Rest is a weapon. All right. Rest is a weapon. How do you use that weapon, but also maintain the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of the momentum yeah. you need as you flow into the playoffs. How, how do you find that happy medium? Practices. You got to have a really intense practices, and that's a Bowmanism that comes from Sam Pollock and Frank Selke, mm -hmm. senior, um, and obviously Toe Blake um, and Dick Urban, senior. Bowman learned from all those guys, and he passed that on. And, and practice matters at this time of the year. People Wait. will say, "Oh, practice is overrated." No, you should be practicing your line changes. You should be practicing your transition game. You should be practicing your transition defense. You should be practicing your in-zone coverage. You should be practicing your face-off plays. You should be practicing your six-on-five. You should be practicing your five-on-six. All these are – there's little fundamental things. You don't have to stay on the ice conditioning, guys. Yeah. But you got to fine-tune them. And yep. the way you fine-tune them is through practice. And, and, and to, you know, sort of accentuate that now, Pierre, think about because of – the agreement under the CBA and the allotted days off and then the schedule, travel schedules. Practices are rare these days for, for, for the, these teams, you know, and I, I've heard yeah. Jim Montgomery talk about it so much. He's like, 
I feel like sometimes I go almost a month without a real practice. Yeah, we'll have a practice, but it's like it's sandwiched in between two games, and I don't want to I don't want to drive the guys too hard at practice when they just played the night before and they got to play the next night. And it so when you have those practices, you got to value them even more. You do. So I'm going to take you back to about a week ago, maybe ten days ago. Mm-hmm. You called me right from the rink, and you said Montgomery lost it on his team. Remember, it's a big news story. Remember that? Yep. And I said, Jimmy, he's not doing anything out of character. No. He's getting his team prepared to battle. Yeah. He knows they're not battle ready. So in order to create battle mentality, you create battle situations. Mm -hmm. And he's done that. And I think the team's responded pretty well on this road trip. Yeah. No, they've been a better team. Outside of the game in Tampa, and even then – they gave everything they had. Yeah, they that, I, the gas. yeah, they ran out of gas. They flew in late the night before, and Tampa was also fighting for their you lives. You look at the rest of that trip. Like, okay, you know and I know. Nashville's a good team. Oh, yeah. yeah. They have a little divine intervention last night when Roman Yossi rings it off the post. Uh, yes. Wide open net in the second period. Yeah, they did. Okay, hockey luck happens for everybody. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. Boston's a hard team to play against. Yeah. He's got them battle ready. Yeah, it's true. And I think they're they're almost more battle ready now than they were at this time last year because, you know, it, they were just so far ahead. And they I, were I comfy, cozy last yeah. year, Jimmy. They had the puffed up pillows. They had the hot soup uh-huh. on the plane. They had everything. They got the little soft towelettes. They had everything going. Everything was smooth. That's not how you win hockey games. And you know, the people still going after our buddy Torts. Okay, still no, going after that in a second. Oh, are you? Okay, good. I didn't know you were doing that. Oh, yeah. Still, still going after our buddy. What do you think he's trying to do? He's trying to do what Montgomery's been doing in Boston. Exactly. And and I get it. society's changed. I understand. I understand. My vocabulary is a lot better now than what it used to be, Jimmy. <laughs> it is. Because I've tried to change with the rest of society. Doesn't mean you change your standards, you just change your modicum of behavior. Yeah. 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 So Torts is coaching as well as he's ever coached. Forget the run to the final with the Rangers. Forget the stuff that he had with Tampa winning the cup. He had a power, yeah, juggernaut in Tampa. And Happy Bullen was on top of it back then. He was right on top of it. Mm-hmm. Why are people giving Torts a hard time, man? Guy's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. He's trying to make his team better. Okay. Great segue there. So we got a clip from Torts today after practice, and I highly suggest everybody go out there, either go to the Flyers site or go to their Twitter handle and watch the press conference of John Tortorella today. It went a good 16 minutes, but we've got a good snippet here we're going to play. It was just brutal, raw honesty. He owned his own mistakes, and he's asking his team to own their mistakes as well. And I don't know – how people can interpret that as him being unfair or mean or or whatever, too tough on them. Listen to this clip right now for anyone out there who's kind of on the fence about John Tortorella or thinks he's, you know, kind of ancient and and, and too old school and needs to adapt more. Listen to this clip and tell me that you don't connect with what he says here as a hockey fan and as a person. All right, let's play it. It always comes down to, right? It always comes down, oh, they're going to quit on him. It, it follows me around. It fo- it fo- and so be it. If a player is going to quit on me or players are going to quit on me because I'm trying to make them better people and better athletes, you got the wrong damn coach here and you got the wrong damn people here. So I- I'm not sure what goes on. My job is I am going to push athletes. And um, I try to stay away from uh, – I have other things on my mind that I don't give you. Uh, I was in control the other night. What I said I meant, and quite honestly, when I watch the tape now, I'm, I'm more concerned than just the second period because of I'm so proud of the team getting here. And, and I guess now the narrative out there is, because I've heard from other people, that they're young, they, they're not supposed to be here. They, bullshit. We're here. We're here. Face it. And let's be better. And I don't think we're ready to be better. 
And that's my problem with us right now. And it is my job. I have not done a good enough job to get them over the hump after playing those seven games, and then each game as it goes down, we have six left. I haven't done a good enough job to make them understand we have to be different now. We have to be at a different level. That's my frustration with me, and that's my frustration with the team. And if people can't handle it, so be it. I love that. I mean, how do you argue with that? What, what's wrong with that? Nothing. I, that that Nothing. is exactly what you want in a coach, in a mentor, in a father, in an older brother, a boss. I don't know what, whatever. But I mean, that is what you want. I mean, he he's he's owning his mistakes, but he's saying these guys got to meet me there too. I'm willing to go there with them. They got to come with me. So I don't understand where the hate is coming for Torts right now when he's just doing his job. And if you ask me, he's doing more than the job requires. He yeah. really is. We, we agree. So the only thing I'd say, Jimmy, about everything Torts is doing, he's laying it out there. He's just bearing his soul. He's put his heart on his sleeve. And I respect that so much from John. He, We've talked about this so many times on this show. One of the things that has to happen in the NHL today that didn't always have to happen when I was coaching there, you had to make players better in the league. Back then, yes, but not the young players. They were going to the American Hockey League to get better, or they were staying in junior. All of a sudden, because of the salary cap, we're rushing young players into the league. And so your job as a coaching staff is not just to teach them how to play in the league, but to help them get better in the league. Yeah, it's a freaking hard league to get better in. It really is, and it's. I can tell you, Mary Lemieux said something to me that really resonated probably six or seven years ago. He said, "Pierre, we were watching tape of our championship teams." He said, "I think maybe in our era we were one of the few teams that could stay in this era and play because we were so fast." And as we watched the tapes, you could see we were much faster than most of the teams we played against. He's right; we could have. But a lot of teams now, if you don't have the young guys that can keep up to the pace and make the right plays, yeah. they're in trouble, Jimmy. We yep. did a show today with San Jose, right? We did a podcast, you and I, today with San Jose. There's a lot of guys you like there. There's a lot of guys that can't keep up in the league. Mm -hmm. And that's why their goal differential is minus 133. Exactly. I, I, I mean – I, there was a key though there too that you, you brought up that it's it's a different league and you're, you're you're developing these kids at a much younger age too. He referenced it there a bit too. Pierre, he's he's developing human beings too. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, these are young men becoming men, becoming adults. They're still. I mean, Connor Bedard is 18 years old. I mean, I, I don't know. I. I I can't see myself uh, having done that at 18 years old, what he's dealing with, facing the media every day, doing this, doing that. It, it, and yet we forget that sometimes. You like know, we forget funny. the human side, and, and he's not forgetting that. And that's why I think he deserves so much credit that he's – people look at him as this big, mean person and selfish and, and uh, you know, uh, everyone says he's just conceited and he – really? Because it sounds to me like that's a guy that cares about not just the player – but about the person that he's working with. We agree. I'll just give you, I'll leave you with this one. And then I'll get back into the hockey talk. Yep. I had an owner once say to me, we're probably going to pick in the top. And I wasn't working for him, but he and I were friendly. He said, uh, we're probably going to pick in the top five this summer. Do you have any advice for me? Because we're going to get a good player. I said, yeah, one piece of advice. Whomever you pick, if he makes your team, Make sure he doesn't live alone and that he lives with a family. Mm -hmm. And he says, come on, Pierre, really? I said, yeah, really? The kid's 18 years old, and I'm telling you right now, you're begging for trouble if you don't. Yep. Well, they picked the player. I won't tell you who. First two years in the league, disaster. They never, they never put him with a family, huh? Nope. And he, eventually the owner said to me, I never thought it was a, such a big deal. Mm. It, it's a big deal. It does matter. The You know, Mario Lemieux 
had Sidney Crosby living in his house. Yep. Mario Lemieux, when he turned pro, he lived with a family by the name of the Matthews family in Pittsburgh. Mm. Now, Mario was way more advanced, I think, than Sydney. Mario had Natalie, his girlfriend, who eventually became his wife. And, I mean, yeah. you know, it was more of a marital situation than it was a boyfriend-girlfriend situation. So he's mature. But he lived in a family's house. Okay. He lived at the Matthews house. Yeah. And, and I'm just telling you that that's just one example. Yeah. You know, of Mario. And then you have Sid, who's another example. Um, it matters. It really yeah. does matter. I know one thing. Here, you've never read one bad thing about Cole Caulfield, have you, in the newspaper? Nope. Never see Cole Caulfield in trouble, ever, nope. right? No. Nope. Never have somebody say Cole Caulfield doesn't work hard, right? No. Nope. Never say that Cole Caulfield's, you know, a bum and can't get stuff done. You know why? When he turned pro, he lived in a family's house in Montreal. That's I right. Know the family. Yep. And so, look, this is not to take. So obviously, Patrice Bergeron, I mean, we all know he was God given, a great person, a good human being. I don't think he was going to go and get in trouble. But at the same time, I also don't think that he develops as fast and as, as good as he did without living with Marty LaPointe. And how he, he, he didn't speak a word of English when he got to Boston, but he was able to live with Marty. Marty served as his translator at times. He helped him acclimate into a whole new culture. And to this day, Patrice is grateful for that and says, I wouldn't be where I am if I didn't have that experience living with the LaPointe's. So I'm so happy you brought that up. So yep. this is what we're talking about. Long roundabout way, getting back to John Tortorella. Yep. John's overseeing everything there for the players. Exactly. And I think Danny Breer has done a nice job. I think Keith Jones has done a nice job. I think the Philadelphia Flyer fans are back. Yep. Which is, they're an important franchise in the league. You might dislike the Flyers, but I'm telling you, they're an important franchise yeah, in the league. Because one of the market. things they do, they create rivalries and they sell tickets. Yep. Wherever they go, even when they're bad. Look at look. Bad. Look at what our Carcitti told us yesterday, just about how they pack a joint on Friday night just to watch the just fights. Watch the fights. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just – they're an important – they're certain franchises, they all, they're all important. Right. Some are more important than others. Right. Original six, Philly. So, Phil, so you say original six. I will say the original 12. Okay. So the original six and then from 67, all the six teams that joined in 67. Those teams are important too. Mm-hmm. Is it where they are strategically, geographically? Yep. You know they, they matter. They do matter. Uh, but but Philadelphia is an important franchise, and I think John knows that. Yeah. Do you ever notice more times than not when he comes out to do a press conference, he's got a logo on? Oh yeah, he yeah. does. He yeah. does. He's got a logo on. He wants to sell the brand. He wants the brand to be really important to his players. Yeah. So. No, I, I think it's great. I think it, that was a really – one of those press conferences. I don't know how how it's going to go for the Flyers. And he, he you got to go watch the whole thing. He does say that too. He says, look, all I know is I got to be here and I got to get them ready to be in playoff mode. Like you heard him there. He's like, maybe we weren't supposed to be here, but we are. So let's do something with it because if we don't, we're going to look back and say, why didn't I do this? Why I don't want regrets for my players. I want them to – Whenever this season ends, I want them to know that they did their best and it is what it is. He can't, he's like, I can't control fate. I can't control what will happen. You, we could get bad bounces. We could lose. We might not make the playoffs. But my job is to have them ready to make the playoffs every time they take the ice. And I, I just thought it was quite refreshing, Pierre. We don't hear that enough. Yeah. Uh, I, I like I love when coaches show the human side of the game. Um, it, it does a lot, I think, to sell it. Pierre, looking around the league, though, uh, some of those games last night, like we were saying. So we brought up the Canadians, Panthers there. We talk about a team running out of gas, and you guys, you you and I mentioned this before on the phone talking earlier. The Washington Capitals appear to have hit that wall finally. They, they were really no good last night, but they didn't hide it. I think as a group, they knew they were no good in Buffalo. Uh -huh. um, and give Buffalo some credit. I thought Darlene played really well. Tate Thompson obviously was a playmaking wizard. J.J. Paterka 
was outstanding. Um, after giving up a bad first goal, uh, I thought Lukanen rebounded and played relatively well uh, when challenged. But, no, Washington didn't look good, and they got to be better, and they know yeah. that. But I know what I texted you last night, and it does have some merit. You know, yes. people can say what they want about Washington. I, I think Spencer Carberry's done a really good job. He has. But here's the deal. So he's doing that without Nick Backstrom. He's doing that without Evgeny Kuznetsov. You know, you start looking at the bodies that have been lost, either through off-ice issues or injury issues or whatever. Tom Wilson, obviously, again, you know, you look at what he's been able to do with a disjointed roster this year. Yep. He deserves a lot of credit. And, and I think the entire organization has really done a good job coming together. This could have been nasty at the beginning. Remember how bad they were at the oh, beginning? Yeah. Like they were bad. Yeah. And they could have been where the Sharks are. They, that's where they were headed. That's where they were headed. They were trending. That's a really good call by you, Jimmy. They yep. were trending that way. And I think that they've all come together, um, and they deserve credit for that as an organization. I think their future is a little more bright than maybe some of the pundits are saying. But they are running on fumes right now, Jimmy. There's no question. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, I look back at that game because obviously I watch every Bruins game so closely. And I look back at the game, was it Saturday, when they uh, they beat the Caps in the shootout there. Yeah. And you could see even in that game, Pierre, they were they were just starting to like run out. It was just emotionally, physically, the Bruins are wearing them down. And I wonder too now, all right, I think a lot of us, I'm going to put myself right in this group, counted them out a couple times, you know, back in January, February, even in March, they kept proving me wrong. They kept proving others wrong. But I wonder now, I, I hate using the term, but is the book out on what was making them stick around? Our team starting to figure out, okay, well, this team is for real. And you could say the same thing about the Flyers and maybe how they're, how coaches are coaching against them right now. We do need to take this team seriously. They are for real. And so I wonder, not that they weren't game, game planning 100% for them before, but I wonder how much those game plans have altered and they're start, you know, the chinks in the armor are starting to come out a bit, so to speak. No, I think you touched on something really important. I think it's really valuable information. Teams do amp it up. You know, you're trying to, you yeah. talked about it with Florida before. Should we be concerned? I said, no. You know, they've played a lot of hard games and they're still playing hard. So that's why I'm not concerned about them. Um, with Washington, it's just a fatigue thing. They, they've been running lean for a long time. Yeah. Um, and, and they've had some great, like Charlie Lindgren's been a. I, I was just going to say, the run he's been on. Come on. He's just on a bench. He, he's human. It's going to come down a bit. You know? I don't think in a perfect world, Charlie's a, a number one. He's a, he's a 1B. But it doesn't mean he's not a competent NHL goalie. He is. Right. He is. But to say that we're going to put our playoff hopes on Charlie, that's hard to do. I, I don't think he's a – and you could see last night he started to get a little tired in that game. You could just see he was getting tired. Yep. Let's switch to the West, Pierre. Um, the I, Vegas – ask you before you ask me. You know what I think of the coach in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. That's where I was going to go. Okay. I didn't know that. Yep. I'm just going to say to you, I'm actually not. I'm going to ask you. Okay. Are you concerned about Vancouver? I was until our conversation earlier when you again reminded me that they are without one Thatcher Demko, and it shows you how much he means that team. And it's not to knock Casey DeSmith. He's been amazing. Similar to Charlie Lingard. He's not a number one goalie, but he could be a solid 1B in my eyes. Yeah. But, you know. Sooner or later, it runs out a bit. I was a little concerned. I know that looks like a blowout there, but I think they've got the coaching. They've got the skill. And I think it's a matter of digging deep and maybe even – and they need to do this now. They need. They can't wait. Okay, when Thatcher comes back, whenever that is, then we're just going to turn around. No, you need to turn it around now. And what I would do, and, and I'm sure Talkit is probably already doing this, Go back. What what made us go on those runs we were on for, for you know a good half, even sixty percent of this season, where we were just motoring along? What were we doing there? Find that again because 
besides Demko, it's pretty much the same lineup out there, Pierre. Am I, am I missing somebody huge? That's been oh, but there's one person missing. He's, he's dressing, but he's missing. And is that the guy they got from Calgary? Yeah, where's Elias Lindholm? Yeah, I was just going to go there. Yeah, Jimmy, come on. Like, he, What's going on with that, Pierre? He's got to go. Don't get that. Let's yeah. go, man. He's got to get going. Okay, so I'm going to ask you this, Pierre. He Now, we don't know. It was rumors. It was hearsay. But he still sees it. He still hears it. The fact that they were rumored to have been willing to trade him that fast after they acquired him. Do you think that's weighing on him? Do you think he feels not part of that team? Unwanted. It, it, and I'm going to say this. If he does and it is weighing on him, he's got to toughen up. He can't, he can't think that way. He's, he needs to just focus on the task at hand and have thicker skin, but he is human. I wonder how that weighed on him when he woke up one day and said, what do you mean? I just got here. What are you trying to trade me for? So here's what I'll tell you. When he played on the best line in the NHL, when he was playing with Johnny Goudreau uh -huh. and Kachuk in Calgary, yep. they were they were the best line in the league two years ago. Go look at the numbers. They don't lie. Mm -hmm. You know who their coach was? Daryl Sutter. Mm -hmm. So if Elias Lindholm is telling me that he's bothered by that after playing for Daryl, there's something wrong. Man. Yeah, something's gay. Yeah. So okay, well, I don't. I'm not buying that. Okay. Good point. I, I get the point. I think it's got merit. Yep. But having coached yeah. against Daryl yeah. yeah. and knowing Daryl very well, yeah. I don't. I don't think anybody's a shrinking violet after so this. Is it fit for Daryl? You just mentioned he was on one of the best lines in hockey. He was and on the best line. Forget one of the best. He, he was, was on the best line player. at that time, right? Now one of one of the members of that line got traded, right? And one of the guys, ironically, that came in that trade back to Calgary, Jonathan Huberdeau, he doesn't seem to have found his fit there, whereas the line he was on in Florida, it was perfect. They all gelled together. I wonder, it is, and this is not to knock Lindholm, I'm wondering if was the, the sum of the parts greater than the part? Can we put no, it he, So he was a guy that drove the line. Kachuk was really strong in board play. Goudreau was really good off transition. Uh, Lindholm was, was the facilitator. He was. I And I, the only reason and I can speak to that with so much confidence, so Jimmy, I spent a lot of time in Calgary, Edmonton, and Vancouver that year that I was in Ottawa uh -huh. uh, scouting and watching games. In fact, we had to stay an extra week in Alberta because of uh, the COVID stuff. So I had a chance to watch a lot of their practices and, and games. Um, no, I, I th just thought that he was a facilitator for that line. It was, it was, the whole line was great. I mean, they all had over 110 points, I think, Jimmy. You'd have to look it up, but yeah, it was some crazy number that they all had. It was unbelievable how well they played. So why is he struggling to find that chemistry? I don't know. I mean, the one thing I'll say – I know it's not Dicky. I know it's not. Uh, I know it's not Tockett. Oh, I'm just telling you. I know it's not. I think this is a him problem. I, it, yeah, but I. I, 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 think there, like, I don't get that. So he, he's there with a countryman, Pedersen. Yeah. I mean, he's going to help him. He's not going to try to hurt him. Pedersen just got a new contract. He's not worried about somebody taking his ice time. Yeah. You know, so I. Who knows? Sometimes there's some fits that are good, but some of the fits that aren't so good. Yeah. Come on. It'll be interesting. I mean, and or is it? The con I mean, is it just too many things weighing on him? Who knows? Has, you, has Hughes been as good lately for you? No. So I think when you you talked about it before, you know, the vir virtually the same parts. I think teams are starting to game plan a little different when they play Vancouver. Good point. Good I, point. I think they are. And I know one thing: if I were, <laughs> if I were involved, and, and Jimmy Hughes is probably watching this. Uh, and Ellen Hughes is probably watching this too. Um, don't be mad at me, but that's okay. Uh, he would hate that kid would hate playing against my teams. Yeah, yeah. He, he gets a lot of free passes. He does. Yeah. He does. That tightens up this and time. He, and he's a really good player. Yeah. You know, you know, you can't. Well, we're, we're in that. Do that with certain guys in the league. That's all I'm going to say. We're in. We're in that point of the year, right? Where we're not the playoffs quite yet. 
but it's starting to get like this, right? It's starting to get real small out there. It is. The dimensions of the rink are the same, but it doesn't feel the same right now, right? When you watched your game last night, your favorite team, the Boston Bruins, and you're watching Nashville play. So for 40 minutes in that game, it was 0-0. Yes. That was an exciting 0-0 game. Don't you think there were chances? And Olmark was fantastic. Saros comes up with a huge save against Charlie McAvoy shorthand. I mean, I can go down the line. There's so yep. much going on. Really good stuff. So when you saw how tight and how hard the guys were playing, you're starting to say, okay, they one team plays in the West, one team plays in the East. But the points are valuable. Boston doesn't want to play in the 2 3 hole. No. Nashville wants to keep moving up. Yep. They want to create distance. They, they want to keep moving up because yeah. they know it's probably better for them to be higher in the standings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's a playoff game. Yep. And you talk about that room. There was not a lot of room. No. There's not That's a lot why of room. after 40 minutes, we had 0 0. Yep. So you're going to have to tell the guys just you got you to gotta create it yourself. You got to find a way to create that space. And and deal with it. Uh, before we go to questions, Pierre, I want to switch gears to college hockey because it, it's we mentioned yesterday we are in the portal season. And you and I were talking about this off the air, and I'll, I'll bring it up now. I mean, Pierre, there's a lot of changes going on right now in this portal. Well, I, I didn't keep as much track. I think it's more because I'm doing the show with you now and I'm paying closer attention to college hockey again. And I know more about it because of you. So I didn't keep as much track in the pass when this started but in your opinion is this the the most change you've seen and since the portal began yeah it's got a potential to be the most change i've seen a first round pick went in the portal today charlie strammel from the university of wisconsin wow he's got three years left in college hockey if he chooses to he was 30th overall with the minnesota wild he's in the portal wow He's in the portal. So is Wood. Matthew Wood. Matthew Wood was a 15th overall pick with Nashville. Yep. He's in the portal. College hockey, Jimmy, I'm telling you right now, college hockey's hard. It's re and it's hard to score. And everybody wants to see inflated numbers. Mm -hmm. And you know, you talked yesterday about somebody that we both know well who is moved to a different team. And he was told in his last NHL development camp. If you want to get to the next level, you got to put up numbers. Mm -hmm. And he did. And he did. But you know how hard it is to put up numbers in college hockey now? It, it's hard, man. Like, not everybody's Macklin Celebrini. You know, not everybody's Bradley Nadeau at Maine. Mm -hmm. Not everybody's Cutter Goche or Will Smith or Gabe Perot or, or Ryan Leonard at BC. It's, it's hard to put up big numbers. It's really hard to put up big numbers. Ken, now we've seen some teams who have benefited off it. I'm talking smaller schools, not well-known big-name schools. I'll, I'll give it LIU. By the way, I actually just saw they got three players. And he, I talked to Coach Riley today. Yep. Um, he was in meeting with his best player, Josh Vary, who's a tremendous player. His okay. cousin Connor plays in the NHL, plays for Calgary. Uh -huh. um, and – and so they were meeting, talking about where they think their team can go. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I know Coach Riley stressed to his group, we're getting character guys. We're not going to get the cutest stick handler, and we're not going to get the slickest guy, and we're not going to get the fastest skater. We're going to get guys that are going to pulverize people at the point of attack. We're going to get guys that are going to die face first in front of shots. We're going to get guys to take hits to make plays. We're going to get guys that know how to clear the crease. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to be fun to play against. They have an attitude and they have an identity. I like it. And he's so happy with the players that he got. Yeah, he's got one guy. I'm telling you, I know the player well. And okay. I, salt of the earth family. They're from Michigan. Uh, the Trella family. Their son is leaving St. Lawrence as a graduate student. Now he's going to graduate from St. Lawrence. He's going to LIU. I just watched that kid play. He had a magnificent run through the ECAC playoffs, getting to the ECAC final. He had an unbelievable run, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. But look at his stats. Like his stats are not going to overwhelm you. Right. So this is an eye test kind of a pickup. I like and it. Coach Riley couldn't be more happy about that. Um, there haven't been a lot of guys picked up yet. As I've been talking to you, because I try to help kids. You know, you know what I. Yeah. I don't make it's a lot publicly, yeah. but anyways, trying to help some kids. You talk about it. 
I just got a text from one of my guys that I know I'm trying to help. He's close to getting a deal done with a Hockey East team. But I don't think there are too many – like you talked about Ryan yesterday, my son. I don't think there are too many guys that have been signed yet that are undergraduate students. It just It's a really hard – Right now, it's been a really hard market. Okay, so let me ask you this. Does this, when it's becoming this active, right, uh-huh. is that benefiting the big-time schools like a Minnesota or Boston College of BU or the smaller up-and-coming schools like an LIU? I think it's probably benefiting the bigger schools. That's what so I thought. I'll give you an example. Minnesota, they won the lottery yesterday. Oh, yeah. Their it's best player. Back- yeah, yeah, the best players coming back. Yeah. By the way, Jimmy Snugger, I, I thought he was gone. Yeah. You remember? You remember when we had Coach Mots go on the air? Remember? Yeah. Yeah. He was Mott? worried too. He was worried too. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, Jim, so I give Snugger family a ton of credit. Like uh-huh. the father played in the NHL, the dad played in the Olympics. Like yep. he, he, he was a really good hockey player. They said no. Jimmy's going to stay. And well, he, 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 it reminds me of Cal McCarr when he came back. So McCarr stayed for two. Snugger was staying for three. I think I think for all those Minnesota guys, there's unfinished business. Yeah. You know, they lost last year in overtime. You think about it, Jimmy. They lost last year in overtime. And this so year in the regional final. Quinnipiac, and this year they lose in a really tough situation with Michigan. I think there's unfinished business for a lot of those guys. They're going to be sophomores becoming juniors. And those guys who were freshmen last year – you know, that are sophomores while well, that's snugger root. And then, you know what I mean? It just goes down mm-hmm. the line. So I think they're, that's probably one of the reasons why he's going back. And I also think if he goes back, he's probably the leading candidate to win this, the Hobby Baker, unless Celebrini doesn't turn pro. Oh. <laughs> and then if Celebrini <laughs> turns pro, he, oh. it's her, he's winning. I, I can't see. I, that would be something if he doesn't. Wow. Well, Owen Power didn't. Think about that. When Owen Power was drafted, he didn't. He went yeah. back. Yeah, good stuff. All right, let's open it up to questions. But before we do, let's uh, talk about our sponsors. Uh, let's start it off with Factor there. Might need myself a Factor meal today. It's just one of those days I don't feel like cooking, I'll tell you. So you know what? You can take Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Make eating better every day easy. Head to factormeals.com slash itest50 and use the code itest50 to get 50% off. You know, Pierre, uh, I don't know if you tried the chorizo one. Uh, I did, actually. No, I did. I, you know Very what I did? Good. I actually created some nachos out of that. It was it was splendid. Just put it over some tortilla <laughs> chips, and voila. I got it like, like I'm at a Mexican restaurant. It was and good. Now you're speaking French and, and Spanish. That's good. <laughs> voila. <laughs> what was that? Oh, uh, whatever. Actually, good, <laughs> good Mexican joint. Our uh, good friend Jason Logan, who's always watching, you met him up in Montreal. We actually met at a at a Mexican joint in Montreal many years ago called Mesa 14. It was amazing. Right there, I think it was on a Bishop across from McKibbins. Some really good Mexican restaurants up there. But you don't need Mexican because you can take Factor and bring it home. So check that out. Factor meals, they're the way to go, especially right now with all the hockey on. You're not going to have time when you get it home from work. So cook up those Factor meals. All right. And then, of course, Manscaped. Uh, let's tell you about the deal we got there. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leaders and below the waist grooming. Go to manscaped.com and use the code ITEST for 20% off and free shipping. Again, that's manscaped.com. Use the code ITEST for 20% off and free shipping. All right, let's open it up to the questions here. What do we got? Kevin Wolfden. Why isn't Slavkovsky carrying the puck, moving more plays? Is it lack of confidence? Pierre, I'll let you take this one. I don't. I don't see that. I apologize to Kevin. I don't see that part of it he at all. Every day with him. Yeah, I don't. I respectfully don't understand the question. The guy's making okay. amazing plays with the puck. I don't see yep. that. I love this. Okay, let's move on. A to Z me, there seems to be a bunch of teams playing very me- – this is kind of what we were talking about – playing very mediocre hockey that are still in the race for a playoff spot. Flyers, Isles, Wings, or Pens. Who takes the final wild card spot in the East? Oh, that's the million-dollar question there. Uh, if you're going to put me on the spot, uh, I'm still sticking with my Wings. I still think – I'm going to say Wings. Yep, I still think the Wings make it. All right, All right next one. One guy that better play better, Maurice Sider. 
He was exactly. better in Tampa. He was better in Tampa the other night. He was no good on Saturday in Florida. He was better in Tampa though. But they yep. need him. They really need him to play better because he plays so many minutes. Yeah, for sure. All right, next question. Jeffrey B. Tonight we got another juggernaut matchup between the Oilers and Stars. Yeah, I was looking at that one. That yes. Should the Oilers be using this game as a benchmark of the type of matchups and forward depth they'll deal with in the playoffs? I wouldn't tip my hand. It's a really good question by Jeff. Um, I wouldn't tip my hand too much in this game because it's not going to affect play. I don't think both teams are going to be in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to give away too much, but I would subtle part of my game planning for this would be subtle messaging to certain players. Excuse me. That's what I was going to say. It is that time of season where you, if you know you're probably going to play a team, you do send some messages. Just uh, subtle. It's nothing yeah. crazy because you don't no. want anybody doing, you know, getting suspended or anything. Yeah, no. You just just whisper, subtle messaging. Whisper in their ear that you're going to take their head off, and that's yeah. that. All right. <laughs> next question. <laughs> you said that. I didn't say that. <laughs> Vincent Joyal. Good day, gentlemen. What team needs a young – what's up, Vincent? What team needs a young D-man or two and can match up best with the Habs as a trade partner? Anyone have the problem the Habs, the Habs have, but with young forwards? Pierre, we were talking about it today earlier. San Jose Sharks. Do you know the way to San Jose? Oh, man. <laughs> that was a great Get story. those poor guys some defense, please. Exactly. Pierre and I were on the San Jose Hockey Now podcast with Shen, Shen Peng rights in our network today and well, don't um, forget keegan keegan's a good guy too oh, really keegan's great as well providence guy and um we were talking they said what's the biggest need and we almost simultaneously said defense yeah. they need defense lots so, of it lots of it. So if, of it if uh if i'm kent hughes uh i'm getting on the phone with uh mr mike greer and uh see if you can work something out and take care of it at the draft we'll see all right next question Angelina Jolie. How are you, Angelina Jolie? <laughs> That's good. Uh, Brad, I said hello. Uh, Canes have a slew of UFAs and RFAs. Jarvis, Pesci, Nick, Nakes. Nakes, I always pronounce it, et cetera, to sign or let go this offseason. Should the Habs target any of them, anyone specifically? Well, Jarvis is a, Jarvis is an RFA, so it's not. He's staying. He's staying there. No. Um, Pesci, I would have interest in, but he plays the wrong position. He's a defenseman. You don't really exactly. need that in Montreal. Marty Natchez is a game breaker. That's the guy I would love. Marty Natchez is a game breaker. Now, I don't know. I got to think they're going to want to keep him there. The one oh. thing about Carolina, Jimmy, I'm just telling you that they don't, they're not overwhelmingly deep with prospects. No. They just signed, they just signed a kid today, Scotty Morrow, who's a UMass. Amherst grad, yes. not grad. He's a junior. He's a junior, but he's leaving school to go play. He's a defenseman, so mm -hmm. that's their organizational strength right now. They got plenty of D. They don't have a ton of forwards, and they got plenty. That believe it or not, if everybody stays healthy, they're more deep in goal than people think. Okay, one thing I'll say though, Pierre, is they want to keep a lot of those guys, but cap wise, can they? Uh, I don't think that's going to be – it shouldn't be. Okay. They got guys that are working cheap too, so I don't know if that will be an issue. I don't think that will be a problem, Cap. I don't and I, I wonder too, and I, I know that some Habs fans are hoping for it, but I don't think it's ever going to happen. But, you know, it, the offer sheet, are they susceptible to <laughs> an and a little revenge? You gotta, like, no, you, see, that's – remember what I told you a long time ago. I told you. Uh -huh. and I'm holding your feet to the fire. Never take stuff personally in hockey. Yep. Because it right. makes you make flawed decisions. Never, yep. ever. Just water and off. That was a like different that. regime, by the way. That was a different I regime. I know. Just, it's got to be water off. The, look, at, some it's, people are going to love you in this business. Some people are going to hate you. Yeah. Don't worry about it. that again. It's just do your business. business. Just do your business. That's all you got to do. Don't worry about the other stuff. Vendettas don't work in hockey. Yeah. People have tried. I've seen it. Oh, yeah. I've been doing that for 34 oh, yeah. years. I've seen it for a long time. I've seen guys get really mad at other guys, and I've seen other guys say, ah, it doesn't bother me. Just like well, I'll just say we mentioned a certain Marty LaPointe. That's all. I'll leave it at that. So I'm sure you know. Uh, next next question. John Smith, do you guys think this year's version of the Leafs is better than last year's? I don't see the changes that they may be enough to go deep in the playoffs. I have about a half dozen teams ahead of them. I'm still, I mean, the goaltending, that's all I go back to. I do think, I think the defense is a little better. 
Um, Who, but, who's better? Who's better on their defense? I just mean collectively here. I just I I think they play better collectively. But um, I'm worried about their depth players, and I'm worried about their depth on defense. Yeah, and the, goal, the goal tending is an issue. I mean, they have. If they can outscore their problems in the playoffs, hats off to them. Yeah, but who I does mean, the playoffs? Look, they have one of the biggest game breakers we've had in the league in the last 15 yeah. years. Austin Matthews is phenomenal. I mean, is Mitch Marner coming back for the playoffs? We don't know. I would no, think. He's on LTIR. Is he coming back for the playoffs? We don't know. But They're I a think. different team if he's not playing. Yeah. I mean, is JT going to – JT such a good player, Johnny Tavares – is he going to be an offensive game breaker? Because he hasn't been this year. So there's less room in the playoffs. I don't know if they're a better team. Um, what I do know, though, is Nylander's had a hell of a year. Mm -hmm. Austin Matthews had a heck of a year. He's yep. been really good. Riley, he's so underappreciated. I, I know Leaf fans, but around the league, he never gets enough love. Yeah. Or Riley's a really good player. Yeah, I'd agree. All right, next question. Jimmy and Pierre, how good is Colin Graff? Mm, I I think he's good. Um, I think, as Pierre, and Pierre said this, and I don't know if you've said it on air, Pierre, but, I mean, in terms of him versus the his teammate, Waylon, I think, Pierre, we agree. I mean, well, he, Quillen, he's going to right do, okay. do more. So here's the deal. if if And I've known Colin Graff since he's a young kid in Boston. He, he's a good player. So I'm going to say that right now. But he's not the guy that's taking the puck end-to-end -end and toe-dragging guys. No. He's the guy that's going to score on your power play with his one-timer. He's the guy that's going to get in the slot and score some ugly goals. He's a guy that's going to be very good on the cycle, but he's not going to get to the net because that's just not his thing. He doesn't have that explosive first step like Quillen has. Mm -hmm. Jacob Quillen has elite speed. He's built like a bull, and he's strong as a house. Yeah. So they're different players. Graf, I think, could be a less physical Corey Perry without obviously the big numbers. I, Colin Graf is never going to win a Hart Trophy. He's never going to win a Rocket Richard. He's never going to win an Art Ross, you know, stuff that Corey Perry's, yeah. you know, done. But but Colin Graf can be a, a good player. Um, the skating, I think, and the lack of physicality is what's going to maybe hold him back a little. And I, I feel like maybe he, in terms of jumping right into a lineup, he's not that guy yet, Pierre. Would we agree? No, because no, because what will happen, I think, somebody's going to rough him up early. They always do. It doesn't matter who you yeah. are. Quillen, Quillen's going to get it too. In yeah, Toronto. into the league. You know, so. that's just the way it is. Look at I, there are a lot of I, – I'm not going to tell you the player's name, but he called me up once. I was coaching him in college, and he called me up. And he said, hey, coach, I've never been in a fight before, and I just signed with an NHL team. Can you help me out? I'm leaving tomorrow morning. <laughs> so I said, yeah, 100%. So we met at the rink, and uh, right away, oh, yeah. We, oh, that's great. We did some business. <laughs> and um, at the end – He's like, I had no idea about any of this stuff. I said, well, no, I get it. You played prep school. You've been a college yep. player for four years. And you know what? He scored his first goal in his first game, I, I want to say, or his second game. He got a goal in one of his first two games. But he wasn't even – he never called me about that. And this is before cell phones. He, he called me after his first fight. Right. He said, that big fun. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, what about your first goal? Oh, so yeah. Kids, you know, all the kids get challenged. It's just, yeah, it is. It's, it's a write right about it. They all get challenged. All right. Next question Are the Kings in trouble? Will the Blues catch them? It's a fair question. I don't think they're in trouble. Jimmy and I have been worried for a while since Phoenix Copley went down. They're you know, to. it's been a big thing for Cam Talbot to play in goal. Um, Seen a lot of good stuff out of. I know they lost the other night in in Winnipeg. I watched the game. They had a, they did some good stuff in that game. I don't know. I don't think they're in trouble yet. I think they're going to be okay. Do you? I, I think they'll be in the playoffs. Uh, yeah, I do. And I think one of the main reasons is you know nobody talks about him enough except here we do. Is Anze Kopitar? I mean, he is playing at another level lately, Pierre. 
seems like he's found the fountain of youth again and he's he's guiding that team and i think that's that's the difference right there between the kings and the blues is what help what helps him too kempe's speed is elite mm -hmm. and the other thing is byfield's gone to another level and that's a big His buy to have to handle yeah. on the floor check in particular so i i look at them i i, I think la is going to be okay the other you know jimmy i'm really mad at myself i mean this okay. There should be more of a love fest for Drew Doughty. Oh, yeah. There just should be. Yeah. Well, and he's I, I hold myself accountable for that. Like, I, I watch all their games, and, mm -hmm. you know, there are nights where Drew's better than others, but he's still really elite. And their defense is not one of the better ones when you look at personnel. It's good enough, but Drew's still got game. He's still got big game. I mean, when you think about it. You know, he and Stamkos went one. Think about that, that draft. Stamkos goes one, Doughty goes two. You know, Stamkos has been to the final four times. Been mm -hmm. the final four times in his career, you, you know, when you think about it. And Doughty's been to the final twice. But think about all the games Doughty has played. When you think about Olympics, World Junior, all the long series when they were going to the Western Conference Final or losing seven-game series. You know what, San Jose and Anaheim, those were at Chicago. Doughty's Doubt, still a really good player, and I'm mad at myself. I should have talked about that earlier on our show. Not this show, but, you know, earlier, a few weeks yeah. ago. Because I don't think Drew's getting enough respect. It's a great point. It's a great point. He really has. And, you know, there was a point, too, I think, Pierre, a couple of years ago where maybe, you know, people were starting to say, okay, is he getting old, whatever. And yeah. he just silenced that. He silenced yeah, no, he, 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 I remember when he did so. Gordon Miller and I were doing, I think it was a world junior. Or, uh, it was in part of pizza. The world juniors in part of pizza. So that would have been 2008. Okay. okay. Just we're doing it. And Dowdy's just off the charts. Good. PK Subban's on that team. Stamp coast is on that team. Mm -hmm. Marshan's on that team. Uh, David Perron's on that team. Like, it, it's a good Canadian team. Claude Giroux's on that team. Dowdy was so good. And I just said, and I didn't mean any disrespect at all. Yeah. So he, he looks a little bit like Denny Podvan, and he's built a little bit like Raymond Bork. <laughs> and because that's how he looked. Yeah, yeah. That's how he played. But he was a right hand shot and he controlled the game. Okay. He just, he shot different, but he, he, he looked just like those guys. Yeah. And I won't, so I got back and I don't know, I was doing a game in Detroit or something. And one of the guys in the Red Wing said to me, he goes, You think that kid's that good? I said, he's better than you think. Yeah. And then he ended up going second overall. So it was yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, was, wow. What a career he's had and he's still having. Uh, next yeah. question. Yeah. Scott Haywood, who do you guys see coming out of the West? A gauntlet of strong teams and is Dallas sneaking – a sneakingly strong team nobody talks about. Oh, yeah. I think people know who Dallas is. But, Jimmy, how many long? It's true. You've said that a lot, though. Dallas is our kind of our sleeper team. I don't even know if you can call them a sleeper team. Right. Look, they when got it comes to the media and fans, I call them a sleeper team, but I think coaches are game yeah. players for them. They know, what, they know what they're in for. They got they're everything there. going on there. When they got Tanev, Tanev was a big get. Jimmy, Jimmy Nill knows yep. how to build a team. They Tanner do. was a big get getting him out of Calgary, and that allows a lot of different things to happen on their defense. And some of the young kids, kids that they sprinkled in up front too, Pierre, that are developed. Well, Robertson, Robertson's just he's yeah. super elite. Wyatt Johnson is that's the guy I like. Oh. Wyatt Johnson's really good. I mean, they got a lot of good stuff. Hey, yeah. you know, you know who's resuscitated his career this year? Jamie Ben. Yep, that's another Jamie guy ben down the stretch it's it's your Dowdy way. Yeah, Jamie, Jamie Ben's. Bringing the heat, like he's, and I'm glad to see Ty is back. Saying like he was hurt for a while, I'm glad to see he's back. Yeah, yeah, they've got it going on. Pete DeBoer too behind the bench. So, all right, we'll do one more question here. What do we got? Chris Tamaris, hey Chris, hey guys. Nationally, Bob and Harry, Danny and Dick, Renee and Gillies are treasures. Locally, Sam and Joe in New York, Ken and Mickey in Detroit are great. What are your favorites, past and present? Well, I'll just say, growing up in Boston, Fred Cusick and Derek Sanderson I loved. And on the radio, I had Bob Wilson and Johnny Busick. So those were my guys growing up. But everyone you just mentioned there is great. We were lucky enough to have Ken Daniels on here. We will get Joe Micheletti on soon. Um, but I'll let Pierre, Pierre – Pierre's seen 
and grew up with the legends. Up yeah, no, Dick and Danny were obviously huge. Bob Cole is a, I'm a big fan of Bob. I uh, never got a chance to do a game with Bob, but I'm a big fan. I loved working with Gordon Miller and Chris Cuthbert. I once did a game with Chuck Caton uh, in, yep. in Pittsburgh, believe it or not. And I think Chuck Caton's one of the best guys out there. Yep. I'm just telling you, he's unbelievable. Um, but I'm really biased. I had a chance to work with a man for 16 years. And uh, he's been on Bob the ice. is pretty special. Oh, yeah. Doc is he is he is man. Not to say that you were in the same, you know, doing Olympics with him or doing playoff games with him or even doing just a regular season Wednesday night game. Doc Emmerich never changed, man. He brought the heat every night. Yeah, he would. We he would meet at the rink. I think I told you the story, Jimmy. Yeah. Two two thirty every day after the morning ski. I would go back work out and then come back to the rink, and Doc would be there. We'd be pile driving coffee and just telling stories and doing our notes. And he did every game like it was a game seven. Every game. Love it. Just love the guy. I'm so grateful to have worked with him. Really, really grateful. Good stuff. All right. Well, listen, we want to thank everyone here in the comments section. Thank all our viewers and listeners. Like I said, too, Pierre, I, I, I don't know if you saw that tweet I put out last night, too. And I mean it. You know, Pierre and I love this part of the, of the podcast. Yeah. Probably. Part. I mean, we get great guests. Don't get me wrong. I love talking to all those guests. But when we get to interact with you guys and answer these questions and kind of just shoot the breeze like we're doing right now, uh, it, it's great. It's uh, it's probably my favorite part of the day. So uh, we really thank you for all your questions and your support and people that have reached out. We appreciate it. And thank you to our production crew. Uh, we are going to try and get a guest. We're working on a college guest. Yes. Uh, we're trying to get somebody because we know next week's going to be very chaotic for people that are involved with the Frozen Four. So we're trying to get somebody soon. Uh, Jimmy knows I'm mad at one of them that won't come on. Yeah. yeah. And um, that's going to be a problem down the road. Oh, well. Yeah, it is what it is. Uh, but hey, we will uh, we'll work on that for you as well. But until then and until tomorrow, I'm Jimmy Murphy. He's Pierre McGuire. This has been another edition of the Eye Test on the Six Podcast Network. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the eye test with Pierre McGuire and Jimmy Murphy on YouTube, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.